Good afternoon. It's Tuesday, January 20th, 2021. It is a very bright, sunny day outside. Pretty good wind from the southwest. Temperatures are warmed up a bit from a low of about zero this morning. We have some more cold days in front of us and possibly a little bit of snow over the weekend. Still, typical for January. I want to touch on a few announcements today. Reminder of our worship schedule for this weekend. 8.30 at St. Paul's, 10.30 at First. Both services will be live streamed. First will have its annual meeting following worship this coming Sunday. Uh, there will be no potluck due to the pandemic. And if you wish to zoom into the meeting, please let me know and I will get you to the meeting. St. Paul's is looking to have its annual meeting come February 14th after 10.30 worship. And there too, if you wish to zoom in, please, please let me know. Also, if you have a report to get in, please get it into Rosie as soon as you can. And if you are thinking about running for church council, by all, by all means, let Richard Balls know and we will get you on the ballot. Um, newsletter items for February are due in today, so please get them into Rosie or to Mary Chapel. And confirmands, we are zooming you in tonight, so do keep that in mind. Uh, I will not be doing a video tomorrow. I have a funeral service to conduct at Dane, Wisconsin for Martin Niebuhr. That'll be at 11 o'clock in the morning, and I probably won't be getting back to Garnavillo till later in the afternoon. So I will not be putting out a video tomorrow. I think those are the announcements I want to touch on today. I want to share with you just a short passage from Matthew's Gospel. This will be familiar to you. It's from Matthew 28. It's called the Great Commission. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped, but some doubted. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us in truth. Your word is truth. Amen. I had an online, brief online conversation this morning with an acquaintance of mine who was commenting on the transition of power from President Trump to President Biden today and he was grateful that our system of governance had worked according to plan and we had a peaceful transition of power. He, of course, expressed some anxieties about the future, which reminded me of a quote from Benjamin Franklin that I had learned a number of years ago now. Uh, upon being asked what they had finished in the Constitutional Congress, Franklin was heard to say, we have a republic, if you can keep it. And I've always liked that quote for two reasons. One, it is a frank estimation of what it takes to run a nation that is the kind of nation that we are. And it is a reminder that each generation has the task of ensuring that the governance that was set up by the Founding Fathers and established in the Constitution of 1789, that our governance goes forward as planned. And I know these things because I have spent a lifetime learning. Lutherans have always been big on learning. Luther was very committed to producing a Bible in the language of the people so the people themselves could read Holy Scripture. In order to see that that happened, he not only translated the Bible into German, but he was a strong advocate of public education. He felt that it was of high importance that people learn how to read, primarily so they could read Scripture. And we Lutherans have continued that dedication to education down through the ages. And I've been very grateful for the fact that early on, as a young Lutheran, I was trained not only to read scripture, but to read it critically, thoughtfully, uh, and to be open to new discoveries, to open to new learning throughout your life. For that's how we continue to grow and mature in the faith. And I can attest to you as a pastor of the church there have been passages of scripture that I really haven't fully understood until very recently. For a variety of reasons, my heart and my mind was kept from understanding them, primarily because I wasn't mature enough, I suspect, but also that it wasn't the right time. And it was important that I kept learning, I kept reading, I kept thinking and talking to others and reading what others had said so that 
when the scripture had the opportunity, opened itself to me in a way that I hadn't thought of before. And for that, I am deeply grateful. I think a lot of the issues that we face, both in our secular society and within the church, can be solved through constant learning, seeking to understand the viewpoints, not only of what we believe and trust in, but what others think and believe. We need to understand what others think and believe so we can first of all understand where they're coming from, but also to understand the possibility that they may be right, or that they might have a clearer vision of a common problem. And if I don't allow myself to learn, if I don't allow myself to explore their ideas and thoughts, I will never be open to that insight. I will never be open to a common vision. And I don't think that's why God has given us intelligence. I think God has given us inquisitive minds, minds that continue to learn throughout our lives, so that first and foremost we grow in our relationship with Him, we deepen in our understanding of the Incarnation and of the work of the Holy Spirit, but also that we are able to live in harmony with those around us. It is important that as Christians we are a witness of kindness and charity in the world and a willingness to see other human beings as people created in the image of God. And in order to do that, we need to learn about them, we need to understand what they are thinking, we understand why they are thinking it. And we can't do that if we close our minds to them. It does not mean that we surrender our belief and our trust in Christ. It does not mean that we abandon our faith and our confidence in God. It does not mean we set aside the scriptures as a source of our faith. But it does mean that we come to a deeper understanding of those around us who are our neighbors, those around us to whom Christ has sent us to proclaim the gospel, and to make better witnesses for Jesus Christ. That is a challenging work. And it is not just the work of the clergy. Pastors are specifically trained for their role as a minister in the congregation, a pastor to the flock, and that's an important role, and they need to be prepared for that. But as fellow believers, it is also your responsibility to grow and mature in the faith as well. For until our Lord returns, we still live under his great commission that we are to make disciples of all nations teaching them everything Christ has commanded us, and baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is my hope and prayer that as we move forward as a church, that we continue to learn, we continue to grow and mature in the faith, and we seek to understand those around us, so we might better regard them as our neighbors, and as well make a better witness to Christ. I look forward to seeing you all again on Friday, and I hope that you have a good rest of the day, and until then, goodbye now.